another episode of Around the Block. I'm Rick Roberts. Today I get to hang out with Brian Dye of Legacy Discipleship and Chicago Partnership. We are outside of the iconic Progressive Baptist Church in the Bronzeville neighborhood of Chicago, uh, just on the kind of near south side. Um, and actually, what the, one of the things Brian is part of is a movement called Chicago Delivers. Well, Brian, let's start taking a walk. Yeah, and let's you do can it. tell me what we're here let's doing. Let's do it. So, Chicago Delivers was started by the Chicago Partnership. The Chicago Partnerships is is a, a group, a collective of churches from the north side, the south side, the west side, the east side of Chicago, from various denominations, various types of churches, um, who seek to develop leaders for the Church of Chicago. And so, a few of us pastors were having a conversation right when COVID hit, and yeah. and we realized that that it was mostly affected the poor black and brown population of our city and uh we realized that people who are on public assistance couldn't order groceries online they couldn't do instacart and other kind of services so we we started raising up money and we raised four hundred thousand dollars to give instacart gift cards to families i think we helped three three or four thousand families uh who now were able to stay at home or order their groceries have them delivered so forth so that was like the beginning of Chicago Delivers, really just uh, in, in around March. Um, and then uh, right now for the next two weeks, we're doing COVID testing at 12 different churches from around the city. Again, all parts of, of the city. Um, and then we just purchased uh, 250 Chromebooks, uh, $50,000 worth of Chromebooks uh, so that churches could bless schools in their community. Um, who, who have who still have needs as, as students are obviously doing school from home and so forth. Um, and so Chicago Delivers has just been, been an amazing blessing. Again, so many churches and individuals have given to it. And uh, it, it's it's kind of like the benevolence arm, I guess you could say, of, of the Chicago Partnership. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, one of the things that has really excited me about this whole thing, about Chicago Delivers, is we were talking about this just a few minutes ago is many of the churches that are involved really all the churches that are involved could have done something like this on their own yeah you know they've got names they've got pastors with names yeah. uh they they didn't need to do it together but they did yeah uh how did that happen uh how, yeah. you know how did how did these pastors did it just kind of happen or were these relationships there? Yeah. What, how did yeah. that come together? So the Chicago Partnership has really been been about form, forming relationships, forming friendships of of pastors from around the city. And so myself and, and Pastor Derek Puckett at Renewal were having a conversation. He was sharing what Renewal was going to do. They were doing a campaign to raise twenty five thousand dollars to help families in need during COVID season. And uh, I toss out the idea, hey man, what what if we did this collectively, right? Because yeah. Um, we could bring in more funding, we could help more people and so forth, and, and, and we could promote Jesus, you know, we could promote the church as opposed to an individual church. Um, and and, and has, has we started opening up the conversation for other pastors and other churches, like everyone has new relationships, everyone has new ideas, and um, it just makes the, the ministry that much stronger, right? Um, and and that's, that's the beauty of the capital C church, right? Yeah. The universal church um, is is when we work together, we're, we're that much more effective. And and Jesus' prayer is answered from John 17, right? right. That, that they may see that we are one. Um, yeah, that's really it. So what have you seen this summer God do with that? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the families, again, about 4,000 families got the, got the gift cards and... Uh, um, and now they, uh, we had other uh, churches who, who adopted certain families and, and have monthly, consistently uh, visited those families, delivered groceries to them. So the idea is, okay, the gift cards are great, but how can we build relationships with these individuals and yeah. these families and so forth? And, and so that's been able to ha happen. And, and, and again, now we're doing the COVID test. And today's the first day of, of, of 12 days, two weeks of, of testing. And, and again, it just allows the church to be present. It allows the church to, to, to be a blessing, um, to serve and, 
and has people show up here at Progressive Church today, you know, they're also getting a meal. Um, they're, they're, they're building a, a, a relationship mm -hmm. um, that, that will continue on uh, through that. And so, man, we just seen, see so many, one is, is it starts with, again, the churches and the pastors connecting. And we've seen, you know, more relationships form and relationships go deeper as a yeah. result. Um, and and we, we, we've seen individuals and, and families, again, who have been blessed tremendously, who've met. I, I heard people who uh, were taking calls for, for the, to receive the gift cards. And, and they would say that people would be crying because they didn't, they just didn't know where food was going to come from. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we're just so thankful and uh, so and, blessed. And that, and that was a big issue at the beginning of the summer, end of the yeah. spring, just realizing that in, in these communities, in some of these communities, uh, it wasn't just as simple as getting up and going to the store or, yeah. or ordering something online and having yeah. it delivered. So that was a huge thing. Yeah. Um, Brian, uh, now, I always ask the question. Give, yeah. give me a tip of, you know, when, of somebody who's sitting at home and, and sees this. And, and there may be somebody that has some influence and, and um, has the ability to pull together getting several churches or several organizations together. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times it's just a regular person sitting at home. Yeah. One of the things I love about you, Brian, is, is that you're not just doing this on an organizational level, but you, you've got a history of, of just doing this in your own neighborhood. Of bringing people together to love on neighbors, yeah. to care for them, to build, dis I mean, do discipleship yeah. with them. Yeah. Um, can you just give somebody who's sitting at home or, or who's watching this yeah. and going, man, I just, I love the idea. I want to know more about how do, how do, what do I do yeah. to bring people together? Yeah, I think we, we start small, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus is our example, right? And he goes out and he finds random people, people that you would never think would connect together. I mean, you have a, you have a tax collector who's yeah. collecting tax for Rome, right? right? The right. oppressive government. And then you have Simon the Zealot, who, who was committed to kill Roman officials, right? right. Um, yet he invites them to, to the same community, mm. to the same group. Um, and so, you know, I think as Americans, we, we always think big, right? Yeah. We always think about something huge and, and, a, and get a building and an office and whatnot. And really it just, it, it, it starts with me crossing the street. It, it, it starts with me going down my block. It, it, it starts with me uh, visiting the church around the corner, right? And, and sitting in, in a in Wednesday night Bible study, prayer meeting, and so forth. Um, grabbing coffee with people, uh, inviting people into our house, and um, grabbing lunch with them, right? Really, the, the it has to start with, with a relationship, right? Because yeah. Again, if, if I don't know you, right, I'm going to be suspicious when you call me asking me for something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. What's his motive? You know, what, what are they trying to get out of it? So forth. But if we've grabbed coffee already, right, right I, I, I know about your family. I know about your kids and, and whatnot. And uh, so it just brings down walls. Um, and, and again, that's, that's where ministry has to happen, right? Yeah. It has to happen around the coffee table, around the dinner table. Um, and again, connecting with people who we never thought we would ever get along with, right? right? right. Uh, because again, we, we live in different parts of the city where we go to different kinds of churches or whatever, whatever the situation may be. Yeah. yeah, really good. Hey, Brian, thanks for your time. Yeah. Thanks for your efforts. Thanks for whatever's going on here. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you.